Hi, this is Terry with Tree Marie Soapworks. Today I'm going to be showing you how to make this soap. This design is a marbling technique and it's inspired by paper marbling. And I'll share a link below to the YouTube video that inspired me. Stick around to the end of the video and I'm going to share a little bit about acceleration and how to avoid it and how to troubleshoot acceleration. Let's get started. First I measure my water and I'm using about a third to a half of my water weight in distilled water ice cubes and then I pour in the remaining water weight. Next I measure my sodium hydroxide which is also called lye and this is something that is very caustic and you need to know how to be safe with it. So if you have never made soap before you need to research the basics of lye safety. After my sodium hydroxide is measured, I add that to my water and I stir it until it's dissolved. Next I measure my sodium lactate and this is totally optional. You do not have to use it. Sodium lactate just helps to make your bar a little harder and it releases from the mold a little easier. I don't add my sodium lactate yet, but I always set it aside with my lye water just so I remember to add it later. Next I set these ingredients aside to cool in some place that is well ventilated and away from any children or pets. After that I start to measure my hard oils starting with my coconut oil and then I microwave that until it's just barely melted. While I'm microwaving that I start measuring my liquid oils starting with my avocado oil, then my castor oil, and then my olive oil and I use little squeeze bottles to top off the ingredients so I don't go over by pouring. Today I'm using essential oils for the fragrance and I'm using a mixture of peppermint, rosemary, lavender, eucalyptus, and lemon. This scent combination came from an ebook by Benjamin Aaron and it's called Essential Oil Handbook and if you're interested I have shared a link in the description below. And this is a very slow moving mixture, partially due to the lemon because lemon is a citrus and citrus is, tend to slow down your soap. If you're looking for something that doesn't accelerate trace, this is a good mixture. Now that my coconut oil is melted, I add my cocoa butter pastilles. And I stir those until they're melted and if they don't melt by stirring, I just microwave them until they're just barely melted. Okay, now let's start with our colors. For titanium dioxide, I always mix that ahead of time so it's predispersed and it's dispersed at a rate of one part titanium dioxide to three parts olive oil. And I'm using 1.25 teaspoons per pound of oils, which ended up being four teaspoons or 1.3 tablespoons of dispersed titanium dioxide. Next we have ultramarine blue and all these colorants today are from Elements Bath and Body. And I use this at a rate of one teaspoon per pound of oils. And I used Elements Bath and Body's colorant calculator to figure out these colorants and it makes it super easy. Our next colorant is the combination of two colorants and they're both neons and the first one is the fuchsia is bright and the second one is cosmic aurora purple. And I use both of these at a rate of a half a teaspoon per pound of oils. And you see I'm putting out these color swatches. This is how I pick my colors. I have color swatches that I've made ahead of time that I tested at one teaspoon per pound of oils and then I can know whether I want to increase it or decrease it according to the sample. My next color is Groovy Green Mica and you can see in the swatch that it's a little light and so I increase the rate from the one teaspoon per pound of oils to one and a half teaspoons per pound of oils just to get a little darker color. My next colorant is Tahitian Teal and I use that at a rate of 1.25 teaspoons per pound of oils just slightly darker than the sample you see. My next color is yellow and you remember my last batch I had trouble with my yellow mica so I ended up this time using no mica and I used 0.75 teaspoons per pound of oils of the blinded by the light and I used 0.25 teaspoons per pound of oils of the yellow oxide to get my yellow this time. 
I did talk to Carrie from Nurture Soap and she said that light colors of micas need to be used at a higher usage rate. She said for the yellow, sometimes she goes up to three teaspoons per pound of oils. So just to let you know that if it's a lighter color of mica, you'll probably have to use more than one teaspoon per pound of oils. My next colorant, which is actually an additive, is smooth coconut carbon, which is also called activated charcoal. And I always use that at a rate of one and a half teaspoons per pound of soap. It comes out nice and black and I always gel my soap, so I'm not sure how it comes out if you don't gel your soap, but if you do, it should come out nice and black for you. Next, I add my liquid oils to my melted hard oils and then I add my essential oils. Now that my oils and my lye water have cooled down to temperatures between 85 and 95 degrees Fahrenheit, I add my sodium lactate to my lye water and I stir that in and then I strain my lye solution into my cooled oils. Next I weigh my bowl and the contents and then I subtract the weight of the bowl off and I have divided this into different amounts. For the white I figured at 44% and for the yellow and the turquoise I figured at 14% and the rest of the colors I figured at 7%. Next, I stick blend until an emulsion is reached, and this one actually took quite a while. Like I said earlier, this mixture of essential oils kind of slows down trace. Now that an emulsion has been reached, I split my batter off, and I have four that I split into 7%, and then I have two that I split into 14%, and my last one is my white batter, and that ended up being 44%. Next, I just add my colorants to my batter and I start with my white, which is the biggest amount of batter, and then my turquoise and yellow are the next size down. And then the last size down is the black, green, pink, and blue. I was just going to pour these in the mold without any squeeze bottles, but at the last minute I decided to use squeeze bottles and I'm glad I did, it worked really well. I'm preparing my squeeze bottles here and I'm just lining them with the sealed air packaging that you get in your shipments and I just cut the top off and slide them into my squeeze bottles and they work really nicely. At this point, I just put a good amount of base batter in the mold, and I still wish I would have put a little more in there, so I used 44% for my white, and I should have probably used around 60 or 70% for the white. I should have just listened to my own advice I gave in the heart swirl video, but I didn't, and 
I will have to remember that next time when I'm doing a slab mold. That I want a little more on the bottom. You can only put so much on the top. Since this is a nine bar slab mold, each of these little circle groups are situated right over where a bar would be. So it worked out really well to have each of the colors in each of the bars. Besides the swirling, this is the most fun part of the design. It's inspired by that other YouTube video I was talking about, and I think if I were doing it again with soap, I probably wouldn't use so many colors in the concentric circles because they end up being such thin lines, but it was so much fun. Phase two of this design is the same, only just using different colors. Here I'm just popping a few bubbles with my skewer. If I do something like this again, I might try it without the black. I like it with the black, and I use black on about every single batch I make, but when I when I had just the colors in without the black, I think I like that. So we'll see what I do next time. Let me know if you like this color combination, or if you think it would be better without the black or any certain color. My kids didn't like the yellow, so they thought I should have left that part out, but I like the yellow. I made a cover for this mold with a sheet of foam board and I cut it to fit the top of the mold and then I cut another one to fit down inside the mold. So I fastened those two together and it makes there not be that much headspace. In some of the previous batches that I made, I mentioned that when I use a slab mold, I get soda ash and I really think it was to do with the amount of headspace. When you have a lot of headspace, it seems like you're more likely to get soda ash. I processed this soap in the oven like I mentioned in all of my videos and one thing I wanted to tell you about oven processing, I do that to force my soap through gel. Because I use a lower water amount, it's harder for it to go through gel. Higher water amounts go through gel easier and they overheat at lower temperatures so it's not necessary to force your soap through gel, it usually goes through gel pretty easy on its own. My water amount is 25% of my oil amount. So when you use soap calc, it says 38%. I changed that to a 25%. And that's what I'm considering lower water. And if you're using a higher percentage in that percent area and you process yours in the oven, you just could possibly run into overheating. The reason why I process my soap in the oven is that I'm trying to avoid partial gel. Since it's harder for my soap to go through gel because of the lower water, I need to nudge it a little and that's why I oven process. Here I'm just slicing off the edge of my slab because I want the edges to be 90 degree angles. Next I slant my ruler and I mark and divide my soap into three equal parts. If you're wondering why I slant my ruler to divide my soap, I'm posting a video next on why I do that and show you a little bit about how I do it. So stay tuned for that video. Next I divide those pieces into three as well.
since I'm just cleaning the bars now and I kind of already told you what I would have done differently, we're going to talk a little bit about acceleration and how to stop it or how to slow it down. Fragrances often cause acceleration and the ones that are usually the bad actors are the ones that are florals and also the more hot and spicy ones. And I find that the ones that are like oceany scents sometimes can cause acceleration. Also when you're dealing with essential oils, the ones that are the more spicy scents like the cinnamons and cloves and things like that cause acceleration and the ones that are citrus slow down acceleration or slow down trace. Certain butters can cause acceleration and often it's the ones that have a higher melting point and shea butter is one of them and I know palm kernel oil which is solid at room temperature causes acceleration but a lot of times I think it's just because it's false trace and it's getting cold again and it's just starting to false trace and if you don't know what false trace is it looks like trace but it's actually kind of a more grainy consistency and it's when the hard oils are kind of getting hard again. So if your texture is grainy and it seems like it's accelerated really fast it's probably because of false trace and if it's grainy you can just stick blend through that. This week on the Tree Marie Soapworks Facebook group, I had a post about water and using 25% water as a percentage of oils. And you see my videos and you see how it's working for me and I have plenty of time to work. I think if you're switching to that discount and you're having acceleration, I think it could be due to your recipes having a lot of saturated fats in them. If you look at your printout from soap calc and you look in the upper right corner, there's a ratio and the ratio is saturated to unsaturated fats. When I make swirl recipes, I always have about a rate of 43% to 57% or so. But if you're having a higher number of saturated fats or you're having near equal like 50-50 saturated fats to unsaturated, you could be getting acceleration because you have a lot of saturated oils. And saturated oils aren't necessarily just your hard oils. All of your liquid oils have saturated fats in them as well. So you can look at that ratio and kind of predict what your recipe is going to do. So you want a lower number on the left side for the saturated fats and a higher number on the right for the unsaturated. And like I say, mine is close to 4357. Another thing that causes acceleration is your stick blender. So if you stick blend it too far, you can't go back. So what I would suggest is just stick blending it until an emulsion is reached and that's when it's not separating anymore when you pull your stick blender out and you look at the bell of your stick blender and it doesn't look grainy on your stick blender you it looks like a thin even film over your stick blender but it's still fairly watery i would suggest doing that and then you split your batter and you color your batter and you add fragrance and that gives you more time to work and then if you need to stick blend it more after that you can stick blend or you can just kind of wait for it to set up it will set up on its own eventually but you have to have patience and if you don't have patience, you can mix it with a stick blender, but oftentimes when it's in smaller quantities, it's harder to mix because you introduce bubbles. And this is where I like to use my cordless mini mixer because it's smaller and it doesn't introduce so many bubbles. If you're interested in the Facebook group I was talking about, we discuss topics and you can ask questions and we can troubleshoot and you can share your beautiful soap. Coming up soon, I'm going to post the video about why I slant my ruler when I'm dividing my soap. And I made some confetti soap out of some of the soap that I cut off of this one and I also had another pour off soap from this batch. So I made that into some confetti soap so as long as it comes out when I cut it, we will have that video after the ruler slant video. If you found this video helpful, please give me a thumbs up and subscribe and hit the bell for notifications and share it with your friends. Thank you to all of you who placed orders this week. I really appreciate it. Thank you everybody for watching and have a great day.